Hello and welcome back to another SMC News Roundup with Somerville Journal. We are joined in the studio with the ever wonderful and dedicated journalist of Somerville Journal, Julia Taliesin. Hi, Erica. Thanks for having me. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> it's great to see you. You too. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy 2020. Yes. Um, a lot shaking up here in Somerville. Oh my goodness. Um, so much to dive into. Yes. One of the first things do you want to talk about is the paraprofessional contract negotiations. Sure, what yeah. What is going on? Yeah, a lot. Um, that was definitely one of the bigger things to dive into mm -hmm. right in January. Um, so this is definitely something that's been going on for a while. Um, technically, uh, the contract negotiation actually began in the spring. Um, but the reason why this is still going on is because even though um, contract negotiation began, they came to a contract. When that contract was brought to the paraprofessionals, they voted it down, and that was only in October, which is the reason why negotiations are still ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, but what happened last week um, was a big rally at a school committee meeting um, at City Hall. Mm -hmm. There were, I mean, I, I did not do a head count, but I would I would guess definitely, I mean, definitely over a hundred people. Wow. Um, at first, they were all crowded around that kind of like Highland Ave intersection right outside of City Hall, and then they all kind of marched up right in front of City Hall. Um, they were chanting all sorts of things, but the goal is that they are fighting for, in their words, a fair contract or a living wage for paraprofessionals in Somerville. Um, what is a paraprofessional for folks who might not? Sure. Even so know a paraprofessional in the Somerville education system is essentially um, there. It's complicated. I mean, what a paraprofessional is looks different in every field, and sure. they are, they are in every field. But a paraprofessional educator um, typically does not have all of the same qualifications as a teacher. They might not have a license or a degree. Sometimes they do, um, but the job looks a little bit different. So in a classroom, typically a teacher is preparing, like prepares the lesson plan and delivers the lesson. But a paraprofessional is kind of instrumental to getting it across. So they're in the classroom. In some cases, they're mandated to be in classroom if it has to do with special education or certain younger age groups. Um, and they help kind of deliver, like get the, get the um, lesson that was delivered by the teacher kind of actually into the minds of the students. So they're working with students at their desks on the exercises. They're helping students who might need a little bit more attention. A little one-on-one -on -one instruction Exactly, as well. yeah. Um, so, and there are, there are a good amount. I think there are around 130 paraprofessionals wow. in Somerville. I'm not sure. I think that's true. Around, yeah. uh, Around there. Um, but right now, um, the Somerville Teachers Association, which is the union that represents mm -hmm. teachers in Somerville, um, are kind of going to bat, so to say, uh, so to speak, for the paraprofessionals um, to raise their wages. Um, so as it stands right now, the absolute lowest a paraprofessional could make is around 20000 and the absolute highest after nine years with a good like a great deal of um, education and qualification is only a, a little above 25000 Wow. So it's actually a pretty narrow range. Yeah. Um, so what the STA is arguing for is that, first of all, we should start the salary at 25000 and that it should go up in much higher increments so that the highest someone could be making is 36000 mm -hmm. um, which you know, according to the school committee, and I mean really anyone who looks at the numbers, it's, it's a really big jump. It's a really, really big jump. So the school committee um, had come back to that uh, proposal with a smaller increase. It's a, it, they call it an 80%, 18% increase over three years. It's six, it's five, six, and 7%. Okay. Um, so it, 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 it is an increase, it does represent an increase. They say that it represents a totally, like an above average increase compared to our regional counterparts. Mm -hmm. um, but the STA is saying that it's not enough. Um, so and they're still in this ongoing negotiation. Right, and where we're at now, and where I'll kind of leave it, is that at, the, at this time, the negotiations have moved to mediation, which means that someone from the Department of Labor Relations has been called in to mediate this contract negotiation. Okay. Um, so it's ongoing. The school committee, um, you know, they say that they're, you know, negotiating in good faith, that they don't want to fight the people that they're working with, that they're absolutely committed to, you know, offering a fair contract to paraprofessionals. 
Um, so it's not really clear yet kind of how this is going to shake out, but it's, it's definitely a hub on issue. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. And one of our member producers here, um, the Somerville Labor Coalition, mm. um, they produced the Somerville Labor Show and they brought in some um, yes. guests the other week um, who spoke about the issue as well. So some further media to, to yeah. check out to um, get informed on the issue. So thank you for, for that. Um, if we want to kind of continue on to more on just kind of these actions, the tenant protection Act hearing, which yes. Representative Connolly is he, he co-sponsored that. that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What can you tell us about that? I know it is really related to the fact of just rent has been hiked hiked up for right. so many years, and mm -hmm. it's been um, a concern about just livability, mm -hmm. right? So. Mm -hmm. What would this act do? Yeah, so there's a lot there. And actually, I will say that the hearing was on a whole slew of housing bills. Mm -hmm. So it was not just the Tenant okay. Protection Act. Um, and this kind of Somerville coalition were there to testify mainly on two. One of them was the Tenant Protection Act. Mm -hmm. And one of them doesn't necessarily have a fun and fancy name, <laughs> but it's Senate <laughs> Bill 773, um, I'm pretty sure, which is um, regarding real estate transfer fees. Mm, okay. Um, so those were the two kind of big ticket items that Somerville people, I think um, uh, Ellen Schachter, director, ha director of Housing Stability, was there. America to Tony was there. Um, counselors McLaughlin and Ewan Campin were there. Um, so Somerville showed up yeah. um, for sure to kind of speak about this. That's good. Um, but the Tenant Protection Act essentially um, is, is it's relatively simple. Um, it, it will um, let communities elect to bring back rent control. So the Tenant Protection Act does not immediately institute rent control statewide. So it's up it to is a local option bill, yes. So what it would mean is that if that is passed, municipalities would have to go through their own process to elect, to institute um, the rent control measures that are allowed in that bill. But the reason why Connolly is saying mm -hmm. this is the right move is that it would allow each municipality to tailor it to their their community essentially, right. um, and more flexibility. Exactly, yeah. um, and it's similar. the The real estate transfer fee um, is actually similar. It's it's a different tool, um, but it's similar legislation in that it's also a local local option legislation that Somerville is advocating for, um, and the reason is for that. Um, the kind of reasons that they gave is that Boston and I think Nantucket is another community they mentioned, um, want to have um, a real estate transfer fee that only applies to like sale, sales over like two million, for example. Um, and to, clear, to clarify, a real estate transfer fee is just like a small tax essentially mm -hmm. that is applied when there is like a transaction, a real estate transaction. Right. Um, and Somerville is saying, well, that's great for Boston and Nantucket, but actually that won't work for us because a lot of our sales have, are like 1 million, 1 1.2 right. million, sometimes even like, you know, 700,000 for like three family home or whatever. Um, and that we need this local option bills so that we can create something that works well for us. Um, so those are kind of the, the two big things, but there has been a lot of movement on this. There was a rally earlier um, at late in the fall of 2019, um, there, this hearing was packed. It was packed to the gills. They had two hearing rooms that were open side by side, and there was an overflow room that also was standing wow. room only, a floor above, in like uh, the I think the Hall of Flags is what they call it. Mm -hmm. There were so many people. The hearing lasted eight hours, wow. and there was also a rally outside um, on the steps. And I will really say, passionate and sensitive yes, issue. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I was there. I wasn't there for eight hours. I was there for about six. That's um, still that's still a good, a good uh, yeah. portion of it. Um, but. From what I heard, um, you know, our elected officials are definitely in favor of these, so they did testify in favor of these bills. But the majority of the people who offered testimony were also in favor. There, there were a couple um, people, some representing the Greater Boston Real Estate Board, who testified mm -hmm. um, against these measures, um, mm -hmm. saying that this is not the right move, you know, we should be increasing production, um, rather than kind of putting things through that are going to prevent landlords from even buying in the first place or renting in the first place, that this is not the right thing to do. Um, so there, there was some opposition expressed. I don't want to kind of sure. put it out that it was 100% everybody all mm -hmm. for it. Um, but most of the people there, I would definitely say, given the amount of buttons and t-shirts and signs that were there, were in favor of passing a lot of these measures. Wow. And so what are those next steps, I guess, in terms of how this would... You know, I think up. it's different. A lot of these bills, um, I mean, Joe Curtitone actually mentioned this in his um, in his inauguration speech, that there hasn't been a lot of action okay. at the State House on these bills, that there's been a lot of this kind of action, I guess sure. you could say. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's like a lot of talk, there's been hearings, there's been rallies. 
Um, but it, as far as passing, like some of the home rule petitions, Somerville has some of these that have been co-sponsored by Somerville's legislators. Mm -hmm. um, it hasn't been happening. So we'll see. So we don't know. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're there, they're filed, they're in session, and there's, there are hearings happening on them. So they're not kind of just sitting stagnant. There's a tension. Um, yeah. But I th you know, these are really contentious issues. I mean, rent control, rent control is big, you yeah. know, like it's and to repeal still, the statewide to, ban would be it, it would be measure, huge. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, so it's it's I don't I don't know. You know, I can't say, but we'll I, what whatever happens, happens it, it won't be quiet. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, clearly it was a packed house. Yeah. So I'm sure <laughs> this will. Yeah, this will um, continue on strongly mm -hmm. here. Um, Wow. Well, okay. So moving on, um, you mentioned some inaugurations. Yeah. You mentioned Mayor Joe giving mm -hmm. his speech. Um, we have some new leadership in the city council. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, a bit? absolutely. So the inauguration was officially on January sixth, I think. Um, it was a very, very festive evening. It was my first one Ooh. covering it. I covered the, um, the the kind of midterm address last year, but this was much more like patriotic. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a really cool event. Um, so yeah, obviously, you know, Mayor Joe was sworn in for his ninth term. And um, the city council, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, the city council has a new president and vice president. So um, Katiana Ballantyne and Matt McLaughlin were the old president and VP duo. And now Matt has stepped up to president. And Mary Jo Rossetti is going to be serving as his vice president. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, both, you know, Mary Jo's speech was really long, full, full of, of things. Um, so I can definitely, I can't get to all of them. And Matt's speech was it's quite... Some good goal setting. Yeah, yeah. And conversation um, they, they about both, future. Yeah, they both yeah. had some really interesting speeches. But I, I think a couple highlights. Um, I know <laughs> that... <clears throat> um, Mayor Curtitoni mentioned uh, working with the Jobs Creation and Retention Trust to develop a fund to help Somerville High School graduates go to a community college mm. in the state, which is a new kind of municipal approach to making college and higher education accessible, accessible which yeah. is, that's something kind of new and different. Um, Matt McLaughlin mentioned um, he, he really wants to develop a people's budget this budget season to be more proactive because a lot of the way that the city council manages the budget is reactive, that the administration brings the budget to them and then they can't add anything, they can only cut. So his goal is to start the process pretty much like now, like starting in February, um, and engage the public, engage the community on writing their own budget, essentially, wow. and then give that to the administration. The first of its kind? The first of its or? kind. Okay. And give it to the administration and say, this is what the people want, which I think Matt McLaughlin is hoping will at the very least offer some transparency so that the community <laughs> can see this is the budget we developed and this is the budget the administration proposed. Like, where are the differences and why? Wow. You know what I mean, um, so it's going to be a process. Um, it's I'm sure it will be contentious, but I'm I'm certainly kind of interested to see how that's going to shake out. Yeah. Um, and I wonder how it will change the budget process. Uh, you know, as it relates to the city council. So and it's how, seemingly how more participatory in nature. Hopefully, right. Yeah. Or at least it'll still, inform. People right. It doesn't where, yeah. change the way that the city council can interact with the budget, but it does, I, and what Matt said is like, it, it's more transparent. That's right. what he's hoping, that it will just hopefully open up the budgeting process to be just way easier for everyone to kind of understand and look at. Um, and so people n can pick and choose the things that they really care about, but also see how, you know, this is how much money we have. How do we all work together yeah. to kind of, um, which I think is- Matt, he's always shaking it up. I know, one. and there are many other things. He wants to do some, um, city charter reform, which could be really interesting, um, and kind of literally change the way that government functions mm -hmm. in Somerville. Um, yeah, there's there was a lot. Um, we have a couple stories up on it, again, with the highlights, but their full speeches are online, and I, I highly recommend reading them. Cool. Yeah, they're, they're great. Yeah, yeah, well, we're all looking forward to both uh, uh, President McLaughlin's and uh, Vice President Rossetti's leadership. Mm -hmm. So this is exciting. Um, and then Representative Denise Provo, um, mm -hmm. after 15 years mm -hmm. of, of being our wonderful uh, elected official mm -hmm. here, um, is stepping down. So 2021, she's yeah, so transitioning onward. She is. I know. It was everyone. Uh, the response. And thank on, you to her for I all know. of her all of her service. She's Absolutely. done so much, um, especially for the community media center mm -hmm. here and just free she's speech and civil liberties. So much, and, so yeah. much. Like so much, so much. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I know. I I was really floored, kind of you know reading a little bit more about her when she made this announcement, um, and the outpouring of you know support and sadness, but also gratitude mm -hmm. on social media was just really something. Yeah. Um, but. She 
she, I mean, yeah, she she first ran for city councilor in 93, mm -hmm. lost, ran again in 95, lost, and then in 99, she ran for councilor at large and won and has essentially been serving Somerville in some capacity since. She never gave yeah, up. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty amazing. And she, she went pretty much right from, you know, she was serving as councilor at large and then when um, Pat Jalen was elected to senator and her spot became open, she was like, mm, took mm -hmm. out papers and Great. was elected and sworn in and now here we are. Um, she, did, um, she did emphasize, and I, I'll say that she's not, um, Resigning, correct. Right. So she she's she is her she's finishing her term strong. Right. She's going to be here right until the next person is sworn in. So she's right. not going anywhere yet. Um, and she was at the hearing on the Tenant Protection Act, and she's still everywhere at once. She's I see very her all over accessible the place. Yeah. Uh, person. She's come on so many different programs here. Yeah. Um, one of which recently sharing her poetry and no way. she's just yeah she's oh, a, so a, cool. a human about town and very creative and also has been a longstanding member of the media center. Yeah. <laughs> um, her and both Senator Jalen. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so just, yeah, really great example of how you can be in this leadership role, mm -hmm. but also be very much on, on right. the ground, right, Absolutely. with your with your constituents. I know, so. no, she's really something. Um, so yeah. onward, yeah. Onward, I know, indeed. Um, but I wanted to ask you, there's a film screening coming up, right? Sure is. Excellent <laughs> transition into that. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, so the Media Center um, partnered uh, last, gosh, I think it was about a year ago with the City of Somerville's Health and Human mm, Services mm -hmm. on a grant-funded project um, called uh, From My Heart to Yours, which it, when it first began, it was just a project to research and try to share um, basically a, a glimpse into opioid addiction and recovery and the resources that exist. So. Um, we were tasked with coming up with a creative, yeah. um, moving uh, way to share this. And so um, we finished the short documentary this past fall. Um, and it's just under 20 minutes, but we just began our 2020 film screening series of it and we're we're taking it on around the town here in Somerville. Yeah, I feel like I've seen a lot of screenings of it kind yeah, of all so over the place, right? So you know you may have. That's amazing. <laughs> um, we just finished the first one at um, MORE, mm -hmm. the Massachusetts Organization of Addiction Recovery, um, and we're going on to our second event at the Somerville Council on Aging on okay. Holland Ave. Cool. Um, and so we'll do um, that second one and then another one at Connexion um, in East Somerville um, in March and then in April at the Somerville Public wow, Library. all Main over Branch. town. So I love it. We're trying to engage with different audiences and just mm -hmm. community members. And bring it to and, them. Yeah, That's and bring it to them. And also it's a really great way for us to do community outreach, obviously, mm -hmm. through this um, project. Um, and to hopefully showcase the value of us as an organization yeah. and the types of stuff that we can do. But it's been really, um, yeah, really emotional and, and personal at times and political just to kind of look at, you know, addiction in general and the pathways that people have taken to, to you know, experience, um, you know, a happy life again and, yeah. and, and to challenge, um, you know, stigma and bias that exists in our society. I think that's so great. It, it, it remains so important to talk about this issue, especially kind of in, in the realm of Somerville. Yeah. That was something I think um, now President McLaughlin mentioned in his inauguration speech. One of the things was that, you know, so many of his friends no longer live in the city and he was like either they've had to move out because of gentrification right. or he's lost them to opioid right. abuse. And yeah. it's, it's ongoing, you know what I mean? A lot of the stories we've written on that area are, you know, really well read and important because yeah. people are know that this is something that's really important to keep on talking about. Right. Yeah. No, totally. And I think what was really great was at the first screening, we were able to hear from, um, you know, other community organizations who came to the screening that were sharing, you know, sto really personal stories and just about resources that exist that we didn't even know about. So a lot of a lot of interest now in potentially doing like a part two and not just only focusing on opioid addiction, but also just generally addiction and just other other conversations. So stay tuned for yeah. other, you know, other projects like that. But but awesome. yeah, so um, our website has more information. Thanks for cool. thanks for bringing attention to that. Of course, that's Appreciate awesome. it. <laughs> um, so what are some other ways people can get in touch with you? Um, and all that good stuff if they have any oh, yeah, story please. tips or just always looking for story tips um facebook instagram and twitter always please reach out um on twitter and instagram we're at ville journal v-i-l-e 
journal. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, my email, of course, my first initial and last name, J-T-A-L-I-E-S-I-N at wickedlocal.com. Um, Facebook message is also, you know, great. I'm, I'm really responsive in that regard. But yes, please, we, we are always looking for stories from the community. I'm always interested in what people want to know more about. I may be one person, so please be patient <laughs> with me as I try to get to it all. However, I always want to know. I, I would rather know what's going on, absolutely. So You're thanks, doing Erica. amazing work. <laughs> so keep it up. Thank you, Julia. Um, yeah, thanks for coming on. And we'll see you all next time. And we hope to see you around the community. Take care.